The Lord reigns. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad. Clouds and darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. His lightnings light the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Let all be put to shame who serve carved images, who boast of idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. You who love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together Psalm 97. Another psalm in a bracket of psalms without separate titles, the first of which has the title, A Song for the Sabbath. And so this psalm helps us when we step aside and find a quiet time to reorientate ourselves towards God and to find hope in God in a dark world. And the foundation for that hope is the fact that the Lord reigns. He has ultimate, final, absolute authority. And because he reigns and he is good, the earth can rejoice. We rejoice now in anticipation of being delivered from this wicked world and the wickedness that is around us and the evil, the sickness and disease, the death. We can rejoice because God will overcome all of those things. When the Lord came down on Mount Sinai to present the Ten Commandments to the children of Israel, they were instructed not to come near the mountain. And there was a great cloud of darkness that came on the mountain. And yet the glory of the Lord shone out of that darkness. The psalmist reminds us of that as he describes the appearance of the Lord. The New Testament tells us that when Jesus returns, every eye shall see the glory of his return. And it's described here as clouds and darkness surround him. There is darkness around him because he is light and he stands out in the darkness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. The thing that made David's kingdom strong was that he put judges throughout the land to judge the people in righteousness according to the law of Moses. One of the first things that Moses did when the children of Israel were taken into the wilderness was that he sat in judgment of all the disputes and arguments and issues that arose. For you need judges who will judge righteously to establish peace. If you have a righteous judge who makes a ruling on a matter, then the matter can be dealt with and resolved. But wicked judges who favour the rich against the poor, or who take bribes, are a curse to any society. And unfortunately, many societies are affected by corruption in the judiciary, in the police, in the government. But righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. There is no wickedness in him. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies round about. There is judgment, there is destruction of the wicked, that the righteous might shine forth, as Daniel says, like the stars of heaven. His lightnings light the world. Lightning is very bright, and it shines forth from one end of heaven to the other. 
And so there is nothing that is not going to be revealed when the Lord Jesus returns, for he is the light of the world. And so the earth sees and trembles. Mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. We look at the mountains and say they're invincible. But remember that a volcano is molten rock. The rocks can be melted so that they dribble down the sides just like melted wax. For the power of the Lord can melt the hardest stone. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. And so we're told that this earth will be burned up with fire. It will melt. God will form a new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. And we look forward to that day. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the peoples see his glory. And so we have that picture of the power and the glory of God. So, what foolishness to follow after idols, things that we make out of stone or wood or plastic these days. Let all be put to shame who serve carved images, who boast of idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. God makes a distinction between the nation of Israel that is his people. They declare the God who is not made in the image of anything, a four-footed beast or a man or an object. He is the creator of all things. And so those who serve something that is fashioned by men's hands are fools, are in weakness. Wake up to yourselves and acknowledge God who created all things. Rejoice in God who will overcome wickedness and establish righteousness and peace on the earth. Mount Zion is one of the mountains of Jerusalem. Zion and the people of God, the daughters of Jerusalem, they rejoice, they're glad, because of your judgments, O Lord. You will judge the wicked and vindicate the righteous. For you, Lord, are most high above all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods the present time is a period of trial and testing for us so that we must make the choice. Will we follow the false gods made by men or will we worship the living God who created all things? The one who is exalted above all the things that man makes. But we are so proud. We are so prone to trust our own judgment, to rely on the works of our own hands and deny God the creation which he has made. You who love the Lord hate evil. He preserves the souls of his saints. He delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. We have a choice to make. We can love good, love God, and hate evil. Or we can love to do our own thing, love evil, and turn away from good. But those who love the Lord, who love good, who hate evil, are going in the Lord's direction. And so the Lord preserves their souls. He helps them along the way. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And in particular, it says he delivers them out of the hand of the wicked. The scriptures give us examples of people who have been delivered. For example, the children of Israel out of Egypt. We can trust the Lord when we do that which is right, that he will deliver us. And of course the ultimate deliverance is at death when we are caught up to be with the Lord forevermore and the wicked one can do no more to us. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. God has provided light, that we might walk in the light. He has provided joy, that we might walk in uprightness. So rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his 
Holy Nine.